Okay, welcome back, Rim. So yes, we are back on the board, uh, so that's cool. So today we're actually going to be continuing this little real analysis, introduction to real analysis series, and we're going to define the real numbers before we can, you know, use them. Um, so we're going to actually, and to define the real numbers, we actually we're actually going to express them as sets of rational numbers obeying three important properties. They're called Dedekind cuts, and they obey, uh, let's list that out, three properties. So, a cut, we'll abbreviate it cut, it's usually just called a cut. Uh, so, a cut uh, in Q, and we have to specify in Q because actually we'll see that there are Dedekind cuts in R, which are basically subsets, uh, you know, you've seen, um, like, subsets of the real numbers. We can't really talk about that yet since we haven't defined the real numbers quite yet. But if we just skip ahead for a moment, uh, there are subsets in R, uh, obviously. Uh, so sets of Dedekind cuts, actually. So in other words, Dedekind cuts in R are just um, sets uh, of Dedekind cuts that obey certain properties. We'll see that later on. So cut in Q is a subset is uh, actually I'll just write it like this a, a cut in Q say A is a subset of Q so we have to have that obviously A is a subset of Q that's what we just stated obeys the following so cuts obey one, so we, we're calling it A. A is not empty, and also A is not the entirety of Q. Secondly, for all, um, so if we can find, if we find any, uh, let's just say for all x in A, there exists, there exists at x prime in A such that x is strictly greater than x prime. Okay. And finally, um, we'll just use x again. Uh, for all x uh, in A with uh, I guess, how, how should I word this? It's a basic property, but this might not be the best way to word this, but I'll just say, and uh, y is less than x. So y is still a r rational number, of course. Um, so then, well, this implies that we, we want to, uh, well, this is one of the properties. This implies that y is actually in A. So these are the three properties. They are actually fairly basic. Um, if we kind of want to give a pictorial idea of what these this means, maybe an obvious example would be to look at like this kind of thing. So this is kind of what we're working with, right? This, you can kind of see maybe um, you know, this isn't rigorous, obviously, um, but let's see if this is like the line, if it, this is all of Q, and this is just some subset of Q, such that, at, um, let's just call this A. Uh, yeah, let's call this point A. This is actually the set, you know, actually, we're, I guess what we're doing right now is we're, uh, we're looking at an example of a Dedekind cut. So this is the most common example. It's a standard, it's a standard uh, choice for a Dedekind cut. So let's. The subset is just going to be. Um, it's going to be all uh, x in Q, such that x is less strictly less than a. Okay. So that's the set, and we want to actually show that this is a Dedekind cut. Intuitively, well, first of all, clearly it's a subset of Q. 
it's also not empty because, well, for example, I mean, if we get to the proof, we can be more rigorous about this, but first, for now, I'll just note that it's pretty clearly not empty. And if you take, if you find, take any element here, since this goes down infinitely, we can always find some element uh, below that. Um, well, uh, and for the third prop, well, for the second property, um, intuitively, if we find, if we take any point, no matter how close it is to A, we can always find a point in between there. And we're going to actually, um, make that a bit more, make that argument a bit more rigorous by actually finding such a value. Okay, well, let's just show that this is a Dedekind cut. So we're actually going to define uh, define this or, or the notation that it uh, uses. So there are different notations for this, but what I'm used to using is a of uh, we'll call this R. So, so maybe this is a bit less confusing. Um, so this is our set A of R. Okay. We want to show that this is a dedicate for dedicate cut for all R in Q. Okay. So I guess I should specify that for all R in Q. Cut. Okay. Well, maybe let's see. Let's look at the first property. So the first property is that A is um, not not empty and it's not equal to Q. Well, first of all, it's clearly not equal to Q because just take x. If we take some element, if we take the element r plus one, notice that r plus one is strictly greater than r, and therefore it, it's not in the set. So therefore, it, we found an element such that that element is not. If we found an integer, I should say that such that, that the integer, not integer, rational number such that the rational number is not. In, uh, in the set, so it's not the entirety of Q. But it's also not empty because, well, just take x to be r minus 1, for example. That's clearly a rational number, and it's less than, strictly less than r. So that property is pretty obvious. Um, second property, um, this is more interesting, actually. So we're going to get to that last. But the third property is another really obvious one. If we take any integer that is less than x, um, well, if x is in r, if x is in uh, a sub r, uh, a, a sub r, a of r, x is going to be less than r. But if we take the extreme left and the extreme right of this inequality, it holds that y is less than r. And yes, that's something Michael Penn says. Uh, if you noticed, extreme left and extreme right, <laughs> I stole that. Um, but whatever. Well, clearly, this is what it means for y to be in a, a of r. Therefore, this implies that y is in a of r. And that's what we wanted to show for the third one. Um, obviously, I'm not really writing much of this down, but this is one of the, this is a really easy, uh, easy, uh, but I mean, I, I would say that those two were pretty easy. This next one is a bit more interesting. So we, uh, so what we want to do is let's take, take any a in a of r. So take any a in a of r. Okay. So find. We want to find a prime such that uh, I should say, well, I'll combine it. A prime such that, well. We need a prime to be in a of r and great, strictly greater than a. So we have the following inequality: prime less than r. Okay. So we have this. So now, well, intuitively, let's just take take r prime to be the midpoint of a and r. Um, so take a prime to be the midpoint of a and r. Well, I mean, to, it's pretty obvious that this is going to be in the middle of these two. But maybe to be a bit more rigorous, 
first of all, it's pretty easy to see that we're summing to, uh, this is going to be a rational number. If you split this up using uh, some ax uh, you know, axioms that we have built up for the rational numbers, you'll see that, you, I mean, if you want to be super rigorous about it, it's, uh, you can show that this is a rational number, but it should be pretty obvious that it is. So what we want to first show is that this is greater than a. Well, remember our if and only if chain that we really liked and it worked well for us. So we can do that. Normally on a proof you would you would start off with this take a prime equal a plus r over two, and then you would do it in the right direction so as to not confuse the reader. But this is just a video lecture, so it doesn't really matter too much. So multiplying both sides by two, we have following, but only if a is greater than r, which is true, a true statement. So therefore, this is a true statement, since all of these steps are completely reversible. OK. Next, so we've shown that a, is, is a prime is, in fact, greater than a. Now we want to show that, similarly, we want to show that uh, a prime is less than r, so that it's actually in a of r. So if and only if, um, and, well, you can quickly check that leads to the same statement. So therefore, this checks out. Okay, well, then that tells us that this is a Dedekind cut. So that is a Dedekind cut. So that's really nice. Um, so that's the standard example. And perhaps to pro provide maybe a bit more information, some non-examples would be, oh, I guess a famous maybe non-example, a, a, a good non-example is, well, to start off with the basic ones, anything that contains a maximum. So like if this was filled in, that would be a non-example. Since another way of another way of stating the second um, property is that the set doesn't have a maximum. Because if you know if we look at this and this uh, this with it filled in, well, if you take x which is in a. Um, we can't find an x prime in a such that x prime is greater than x, so it doesn't satisfy the second property. Okay, um, and another example, which I was going to say, is maybe, and we actually, uh, well, let me just show you. Um, if we look at the set S, we saw the set. If you saw my videos on the Supremo, uh, we showed that this actually doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have a Supremo. So that was a really interesting proof. And it proves a way bigger fact, which I talked about, which we're going to talk about later, later prove the least upper bound property or the completeness axiom. That showed that the completeness axiom fails for the, the rational numbers. So let me just write out this non-example. Squared is less than 2. So this, this set. This is not a Dedekind cut because, um, because actually uh, you can notice that, well, uh, well, it's pretty easy to see that um, it's going to have an element. Uh, well, the set of all x that satisfy this, there is we there's actually a least uh, least there are there are lower bounds for this, which is an issue because if there are lower bounds for this set, then if we look at this property, we can't if we just take like. Um, if we take, so if we take any x 
or any a inside the set s, right? And we take another value, which is a rational number, which is this some lower bound for the set uh, minus one. Well, that is clearly not an s, but um, so it doesn't satisfy this third property. And if you want to look at it graphically, this is a bit kind of cheating, but that's why I'm trying to avoid this. This is like zero. This is kind of what it looks like. We can't really represent these points right now since we haven't defined the real numbers. But if we did, obviously this would, these would be negative root 2 and root 2. But we can't really uh, do that yet. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, I guess to give an example of the lower bound, we can take x to be negative 2. Notice that um, negative 2, well, if you plug in negative 2 here, it doesn't satisfy this inequality. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to see that it is a lower bound for this set. Okay? So yeah, this is not a dead end cut. So that's the, again, that's the famous example. Okay. Uh, well, um, I think that's about all I wanted to say about Dedekind cuts. Um, maybe in the next video we'll look at another, uh, a bit more on Dedekind cuts, and then we're going to look at the least upper bound property and a proof of it. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video.